budget around the corner. The real estate sector's hopes are rising. The 100 smart city push is expected to create fresh demand while expectations on REIT regulations are moving ahead in the near term. Put the expectations in perspective. We'll soon be joined by Ajit Mittal of India Bulls and uh, right now we're joined by Bloomberg TV India Saloni Shukla to tell us what the sector is expecting specifically on REITs or real estate investment trusts. Saloni. Well, Harsha, uh, there is a lot of expectation as far as REITs are concerned and this is especially one reform that the real estate sector is hoping that will be opened up by the new government, especially in this particular budget. As far as what the sector is particularly hoping, remember there has been a lot of to and fro as far as real estate investment interests are concerned. Uh, December last year, SEBI issued the final guidelines, uh, uh, which was then uh, taken up by the industry for discussion, after which the industry wrote back to SEBI, uh, saying that there was a double layer taxation. So uh, as far as the December guidelines go, there is a 34% corporate tax uh, 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 limit and a 17% dividend tax limit as far as the December guidelines are concerned, after which in April of this year, SEBI approached the government uh, uh, to remove this uh, double layer taxation and SEBI has in fact taken up this particular uh, presentation with the new government as well to remove the double layer taxation. So now the government is working uh, towards foregoing this double layer taxation and working towards something that is called as a uh, international standard pass through mechanism. So there will be only a one layer taxation uh, that will be taxed on the final money uh, that uh, the investor will get and that this is also the case in bonds. As far as uh, several other uh, read guidelines are concerned. Remember, largely this will be uh, in the range of 250 crores, so high uh, uh, high net worth individuals and uh, big FIIs will be able to invest. Uh, as of now, CLSA pegs this market, uh, though it's very nascent in India, at about 20 to 25 uh, billion dollars and it could go ahead and have a lot of appetite as far as this particular REIT market is concerned. Saloni, Saloni very quickly, you know, uh, what kind of interest is there as far as REITs are concerned? Concerned. Are the companies willing to take take this route? Is this something that uh, real estate companies are, are, are wanting to do? Well, clearly, Harsha, remember uh, the prime objective of either your mortgage-backed securities or your REITs were that uh, sector should be open to more funding because it's clearly cash-strapped. Uh, even the CMBS that has been opened, we have already seen a DLF issuing uh, two CMBS and uh, the recent one is about to the tune of 3,000 crore rupees. Uh, in fact, uh, in December itself, a lot of uh, players, you know, the big ones like DLF, Unitech, Parshwanath, who have big uh, commercial assets, had said that if this particular um, uh, reform is opened up by the government, they will definitely go ahead and list their commercial assets at, at, uh, as REITs and uh, the number that is pegged is about 20 to 25 billion dollars as far as the recent estimate is concerned. Saloni, thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm now joined by Ajit Mittal from India Bulls. Ajit, thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg. Take me through your expectation from the budget this time. What, what, is, it the sector, what is the sector anticipating from the finance minister? Well, uh, the real estate sector, as you know, has been at the forefront of government's focus because of its uh, potential to really propel the economic growth. This is the second largest employer of manpower. This generates the largest number of jobs in the country after agriculture sector. So obviously, uh, this sector should be given the place commensurate with its potential to contribute its might to the economy of the country. So a couple of things I can quickly walk you through uh, with regard to the expectations from the budget. One would be the emphasis on affordable housing. Mm. Uh, the new government in particular has uh, made all the right noises with regard to housing for all by 2020. Mm. And also their plan to go ahead with 100 satellite cities. Mm. So that is one big kicker for the industry and the sector as a whole if implemented in the right earnest. But for that to happen, there would have to be a couple of uh, incentives for people to really go into the affordable housing in, in a big way, both from the developer side mm. as also from the home buyer side. From the developer side, I would say the, uh, the ambiguity with regard to uh, tax exemption, the tax holiday granted to the affordable, taxing, uh, affordable housing segment right. has to be amplified. Mm. Right now, uh, the government allows 100% uh, tax deduction on the capital expenditure for the first year mm. for the affordable housing. 
So uh, this, in my view, is a non-starter because we, uh, real estate developers don't have any capital expenditure. Sure. The land and the construction is typically regarded as the stock in trade. Mm. So they're not able to avail any housing, uh, any tax exemption on the housing projects whatsoever. Sure. So in order uh, for people to be incentivized to really undertake massive uh, affordable housing projects, mm. this ambiguity needs to be removed first and foremost. Sure. Second is, uh, I think it's high time the government does away with regard to the size of the units which are categorized as, uh, you know, part of the affordable housing. Mm. It would be better to sort of dis uh, define affordable housing in terms of the value of the house, say 15 lakh rupees in the metro, uh, in the tier one cities and 10 lakh rupees in the tier two cities. This is one. Second is, uh, is high time that real estate sector per se is granted the industry status is not just a question of granting some tax exemptions here and there. Mm. The question is this industry has been given stepmotherly treatment far too long. It's just about time that this is granted the place that it deserves sure. so that it's able to access cheaper debt from the organized sector sure. instead of going uh, for the high-cost debt from the unorganized sector, uh, in certain cases from the NDFCs. Sure. So that would go a long way. Similarly, another thing, of course, which is no-brainer, uh, which probably is waiting to happen, is the uh, raise in the exemption limit for the tax deduction on the interest paid on the housing loans. Right. It's 1.5 lakhs, which is too meager in sure. the current scenario. I'll get to that uh, in just I a moment, Ajit. I want to push that point that you made specifically about the infrastructure status, you know, uh, specifically on the infrastructure status. Uh, we're talking at a time when many co real estate companies uh, have large debt on their books, uh, have often complained about lack of investment or, or fundraising options. How does you being, or how does the real estate sector being granted infrastructure status change that game? How did how would it change your ability to raise money? Well, uh, that would certainly be a huge trigger uh, in case uh, the sector were to be granted infrastructure sector status. I'm not even expecting that. What I am expecting is. Uh, that at least the gov government should allow the government and the reserve bank should allow real estate developers to uh, have access to certain alternative avenues of funding for instance external commercial borrowing you know uh, right now uh, real estate sector is completely prohibited from raising finance abroad so uh, if some of the leading developers you know based on their balance sheet size based on their robust financials they should be allowed to access funds cheaper funds from abroad uh, that would be, in my view, a very big step forward. Second thing would be also uh, for the domestic lenders. You know, the, there has to be some revision in the base rate so that they are able to extend home loans at least at a much more affordable rates. Currently, home, uh, home loan rates as well as the loans uh, rates on the loans given to builders are at an all-time high, which is really adding to the cost of the projects and is really breaking the back of the builders. Sure. So that should be a focus area, no doubt. Ajit, while we have with you on the show, take me through your own assessment of the demand supply situation, uh, specifically for commercial real estate in, in pockets like Mumbai and Delhi, uh, and how do you see prices playing out? Well, commercial real estate had been depressed uh, for the last couple of years, three, four years, I would say. Mm. Uh, there are some nascent signs of recovery in the commercial real estate sector based on our own experience via the you know, largest developer of prime commercial real estate in the southern part of Bombay, southern central part of Bombay. So we do see a uh, pickup and there is, a, a, you, know, a, you know, definite gain in the builder's capacity for better price realization. And I hope that is going to improve in the days to come as the economic activity gathers some momentum. Uh, people, you know, particularly in the financial services sector, go in for the much needed expansion. Some of the projects had been shelved. Some of the MNCs and all had the ramp up plan for the, you know, expanding their footprints in the country. Uh, hopefully that would be revived and that is going to be a big fillip to the commercial real estate sector. Well, add to that another point, uh, I was just listening to your anchor in the backdrop, uh, the REIT, Real Estate Investment That's Trust, right. uh, which is so far a non-starter in the country, uh, if that were to be implemented in the right earnest, would also be a very significant step forward in terms of mobilizing household savings into productive investment channels. Uh, people who want to really participate in a meaningful way in the commercial real estate sector, for them it will be a big avenue. As also for uh, lenders, it would diversify their dependence away from the banking system. And also for the investor's point of view, uh, who are looking to invest in the 
income yielding, rental income yielding assets, particularly right. in the commercial space, right. uh, this would be an opportunity for exit. You know, is exit mechanism also built in exit mechanism, particularly if the REITs are listed, which is what is expected. We were the one of the first two or three developers who went ahead with the REIT. Sure. And at that time, five, five, six years ago, there was no REIT mechanism uh, even talked about in India. So we went ahead and listed our REIT in Singapore. Sure. Uh, so I see no reason why India, having such a large commercial real estate market, should not have a vibrant REIT market of its own. Sure. But for that to happen, again, there are certain, uh, you know, concomitants, particularly from the tax administration point of, of view, which need to be fixed. I mean, it's all well said and done that SEBI has come out with the guidelines, sure. which would be finalized soon. I mean, right now it's draft, but I'm sure it's going to be finalized in a matter of days. Sure. Uh, but uh, unless there is uh, some very concrete, uh, you know, uh, tax administrative measures, uh, this would uh, not really see the, you know, I would uh, not predictably lead to some of the gains that we are expecting.